The train car has become a staple in the 21 and over Big Spring community. Now right behind me is actually the caboose, which is a newly revamped area that they invite the community to enjoy a smoke free and relaxing environment. We're here at the World War II Memorial and who better to talk about this memorial than with a World War II veteran who goes by the name of Tex. Tex, tell me a little bit about how you're feeling right now. They started their day as an average participant and transformed into a hero. The sport that is flying off the pages of Harry Potter is uniting fans and the athletes alike throughout the world, defying stereotypes and gender norms throughout the Quidditch community. So isn't that where the real magic lies? I got a holla just to be heard with every word. I drop knowledge. I'm a diamond in the rough, a shiny piece of coal trying to reach my goal. My power of speech unimpeachable, only 19, but my mind is older. Females on the football field, it's becoming increasingly popular each year. But for one big spring steer, she's defying the stereotype. Here at the Monaghan Sandhill State Park 60th birthday, we're learning how to do the addle addle. The Iron Orchard has been filming throughout the Permian Basin, and filming here at the Petroleum Museum gives it that air of history and authenticity, connecting the film with the community they're representing. It's been an emotional day for the veterans as they've been touring the monuments here in Washington, D.C. And for Al Stanford, who served in Korea while being here, he tells me he's at a loss for words. Now that Andrews is accepting text to 911, dispatchers want you to know you should call if you can. Text if you can't. It was an emotional day here in Big Spring as a victim and her mother took the stand talking about the alleged sexual contact from former detective Rojo. Now they both pointed to him in the courtroom and the victim even said because of this alleged sexual contact, she doesn't feel comfortable leaving the house, even saying that she feels anxious around law enforcement. There's been heartbreaking controversy over children being separated from their parents after crossing into the United States. Right here in the border crossing city of Presidio, people tell me they couldn't imagine not being able to go back and forth between the United States and Mexico. It's trending time here in the studio. Good Wednesday morning, everyone. I'm Samantha Medney. Taco Tuesday is going to be the talk around town after the Odessa City Council unanimously approved an agreement to bring Torchy's Tacos to downtown Odessa. You continue to blow us all away with your creativity. Have a safe and happy Halloween. And remember, whether it's Halloween or not, you can always be a hero by exercising your right to vote. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day. I trust you'll understand my reference because Shakespeare's greatest hits is just one short day away. If you're a Midland resident and have been waiting for forever to join Artpocalypse, today's the day. With great power comes great responsibility. Marvel icon Stan Lee died Monday at the age of 95. And oui, oui, mon ami, we'll see you in Paris. The U.S. women's national team qualified for the 2019 FIFA Women's World Cup with a convincing 6-0 win over Jamaica yesterday. Both Ratliff Stadium parking lots will have free food and beverages, lawn games, and special giveaways. Plus, don't forget your non-perishable item like peanut butter to benefit the West Texas Food Bank. Get your raspberry berets and let's go crazy for tonight's Prince event at the Wagner Noel. For you, a symphonic celebration of Prince will begin at 7.30 p.m. with the intent of making sure great music lives on forever. That's in store for tonight as Questlove from The Roots curated and arranged the show featuring performances from the Wolf Trap Orchestra. And to get into the spirit of the night, you can even take a picture with a little red Corvette. We're going to party like it's 1999, and we might actually get some of that purple rain, purple rain. 411 first responders went to work on September 11, 2001, never returning home to their families after the Twin Towers fell. That day and, and every day that we go to work, you know, the, the alarms go off and we, and we respond. And we never know, just like those 343, they didn't know that day was going to be their last day to respond. So this weekend, we climb to honor the fallen. Very fortunate to be able to walk for the fellas that gave off. You know, I'm giving a little bit, but they gave all. We climb because they climb, and most importantly, never forget. It's tough on your body, it's tough on your mindset, and it's, uh, you start thinking about what they were thinking about. You know, we do 110 floors because that's what the World Trade Centers were. Nobody made it 110 floors that day. When you start thinking about that, that makes it even more somber to realize that there's people that, you know, where they're just in the, in the lobby, and they paid the <laughs> ultimate price when, when those buildings collapsed. And, but they were doing their job, and, and they were glad to be there. When we're walking up, 
you know, I started thinking in my mind that I'm just wearing just my bunkers, just the basic stuff. But I couldn't imagine what those guys in New York were doing with all the tools that you need to get the job done. It's hard, but it's very rewarding when you finish. Carrying the tags of their fallen brothers and sisters. So they ring the bell and place their accountability tags on the wall, bringing our heroes home. It means a lot, especially being able to honor those that have fallen and being able to give what I can playing music wise. Words can't describe what, what this honestly means to me. In Midland, Samantha Medney, CBS 7 News. The pride of the nation showcased in a city that was beat down and built itself up strong again. In 1980, the men on ice made us believe. In 2015, it was the women on the pitch. Each generation looked to athletes for inspiration. All-time leading international goal scorer Abby Wambach took in every second sharing this personal moment with her fans. And for you guys, you guys made it even better. It's not only scoring the goal, but having it that makes all the difference. These women accomplished their dreams of winning the World Cup, and the Stars and Stripes aren't going anywhere. They'll be back representing the red, white, and blue in Rio, dancing their way into the Olympics as the reigning champions. Reporting on the U.S. Women's National Team, I'm Samantha Medley. We're here at the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum for the third and final day of the Permian Basin Honor Flight. It's been a memorable experience, bringing back memories from 50 to 70 years ago for these veterans. <laughs> been a healing process as they go to the memorials and honor the disabled veterans who have been changed for life. Now with this honor flight, these veterans and Gold Star families have also been changed for life and are building a new family of their own. We'd love to welcome our veterans home the right way because a lot of them tell me they weren't honored when they came home. They were spit at and it was so sad to hear their stories from before that we want to change that. So if you can be at the Midland International Air and Space Port at 920, give or take an hour because it's a flight, we would love to welcome our veterans home. For now, reporting at the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum, I'm Samantha Medney, CBS 7 News.